Hello, I'm Jonathan Canning, Director of Curatorial Affairs and Programming at The High. This week, Kerry, Jenny and I will host a series of online events and programs, some recorded, others live, that are intended to engage you with The High's fall fundraiser, Hide at Home. Currently, an online auction is underway, and it closes at 9pm sharp on October 3rd. At any time this week, even during our programming, you can go online and register to bid at hide.givesmart.com for any of the 45 items for auction. And I'm one of them. I'm available for hire as a tour guide for a VIP white glove tour of Historic Hyde House, during which I'll reveal treasures that few ever see. You can also make a direct donation to underwrite exhibitions, educational programs, or infrastructure and operations. As you can imagine, the pandemic upended everything at the museum. We were closed for four months. We reopened on August 1st, but for only three days in the week, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. As you can see, we've made several changes to our lobby. Stylish plexiglass screens now protect our security and front of house staff. We've had to remove public seating. Traffic light banners and arrows direct visitors on one of two directed routes through the museum. One route takes you directly to our principal exhibition, J.S. Woolley, Adirondack Photographer, in the Charles R. Wood Gallery, and then on to our abstract art collection in the Fibers and Schmidt Gallery. And the other leads you through images of the people, Russian lacquer painting, and then on to the permanent collection displayed in historic Hyde House. Please know that every dollar raised will go directly to supporting the museum caring for its extraordinary collection and underwriting our program. And so for this, our first broadcast in the week, I thought I would ask Jenny and Kerry to talk about their jobs at the museum, how their work has been affected by the pandemic and the programs that they intend to bring us this fall. Hi, my name is Kerry Dudek and I am a museum educator here at the Hyde Collection. In the past, you may have seen me in the gallery giving tours or in the classroom teaching our family and children programs. In the gallery, we would explore an artwork together and talk about the interesting elements that excite us. I am privileged as an educator to be witness of some of the excited faces of the children who have discovered something special to them. Since the pandemic, the children's programs have continued to create space for exploration and creativity at home. With the help of my own three children, we created a kitchen table art classroom. Our children's programs transform to video art lessons to be shared with all who were sheltering at home. Even though we were apart, we could still connect with art. Participation in our programs are where children ask inquisitive questions, think critically, and conduct creative self-expression. Our children and family programs are specifically designed with developmental appropriate content and according to the New York State standards in the visual arts. Participants not only get to create art using innovative studio techniques, but they also learn social and historical connections while investigating artistic methods like the elements of art. This fall, our programs will be accessible on our Facebook page YouTube channel, and website, hydecollection.org. Children and their families can investigate the art of the Hyde Collection and create artworks together as a family. Together, we will look closely at an artwork or a group of works and consider them critically. Using materials that are accessible at home, families can follow along with art studio techniques that are connected to our selected artworks. Our programs have always been about being together. So join us online for Artful Afternoons, Tour for Tots, Art Crawl, where you and your family can make creative memories together. Hi, I'm Jenny Hutchinson, 
Curator of Education and Programs at the Hyde Collection. You're currently finding me in my home office, where I've been these many months transforming our programs into a digital platform. Traditionally, my role at the museum is a blend of behind the scenes and out in the museum work. I am the person that looks at all the details of a program, from brainstorming to transforming those ideas into numbers and descriptions, to implementation and finally review. I'm successful when I have hidden all those detailed pieces from view so that participants can fully immerse themselves in the experience of art. It is my greatest hope that each person leaves the Hyde Collection empowered to explore new talents, skills, and concepts within their lives and communities. When out in the museum, you might have seen me leading tours, working with our educational volunteers and docents, or leading programs for adults in the community. If you've come to an art and yoga or open studio program, attended a tour, or visited our annual community day or high school jury show, you have witnessed my handiwork. In recent months, we necessarily had to move programming to a virtual platform. I had a lot to learn because it was the first time that myself and my colleagues were working with online media and using that type of software for the first time. However, we did not let that hold us back. Within a short amount of time, we were producing educational content for weekly social media postings, designing virtual tours, and one of my biggest moments of pride was ensuring that the high school jury show still happened. This was important to us because we wanted to celebrate our area students' talent and hard work. And it was important that during such a difficult time, under such difficult circumstances, we provided a moment to feel pride and cheer. We tried to think of all the creative ways to get audience members involved remotely and found opportunities to present works in the collection that are less noticed or perhaps that we had very little information about. This birthed the online creative challenges inspired by Hyde Collection artworks, where participants could learn about an artwork and artists and create their own interpretation. We were blown away by the talent and innovative ideas found in visual artworks, written works, videos, and dance performance provided by our participants. We also began hosting a series of guessing games, such as Fill the Frame, learning not just about the history of an artwork and artist, but how the design of a frame played an integral role in the artwork's history. Next, with the excitement of our new virtual tour that you can now take of Hyde House, we created a series called Guess the Silhouette where a shape of an artwork was provided in the morning and then a reveal in the afternoon. With so much change happening so quickly, we are now looking at ways to continue these programs, but also bring back some of the programs we have been missing, such as our guest lectures and collaborative programs with arts groups in our community. That is what you will see this fall, some of our guest lectures and some of these programs virtually, and we'll be hosting another Hyde Creative Challenge. Tonight, join me for one of these special programs as part of our Hide at Home event, where you can meet co-presenters Carol McCarthy and Ted Caldwell as they discuss Picture Perfect Bullen, a historical perspective inspired by our J.S. Willie Adirondack Photographer Exhibition. You can stream this presentation by visiting our Hide Collection YouTube page, or if you'd like to be more directly involved and participate by subscribing to the event in the link along with this video. You can also find this link on our website. As I settle into my office, I'd like to show you the view out the window. I'm always fascinated by this view of the log pile at Finch Paper. It reminds me of the source of the family's wealth and thus of the collection and the museum. I would say that I spend about 60% of my time as curator on exhibitions. I see it as my job to bring the best art possible to Glens Falls, rather as the Hydes bought the best for the collection. I work on a calendar two to three years ahead, so I'm already negotiating for exhibitions in 2023. But at the same time, I have to think of the next show on the docket and so I'm already laying out and planning for January's uh, exhibition of African-American art. Diversity is a key, whether it's the type of art, painting, prints, sculpture, and textiles, we'll seal all of those next year. 
uh, or its period, medieval to modern, or origin. Uh, recently, we had an Asian print show. Uh, we have several African American shows on the books, and in 2022, we'll have a print show of Mexican art. For the remainder of my time, I work with everyone in the museum, really. I work with all the departments, uh, finance on the budget, uh, development on fundraising initiatives like this one, uh, with um, education on our programs. I love working with our dedicated band of docents. I work with media and communications on promoting all that we do here. I write and correspond with scholars and students and the general public from around the world. It's a very busy and varied job and I enjoy it very much. I see myself sustaining what Mrs. Hyde started, which is an active, engaging art museum for her neighbours in Glens Falls and the North Country. So please join Jenny, Carey and me this week for our various online programmes. On Friday, Jenny and I will unveil a major new acquisition for the collection. Throughout the week, we'll post teasing details on Facebook and Instagram. I bet you can't guess who the artist is. See you on Friday for the unveiling. Don't forget to visit hide.givesmart.com to bid for the online auction items. Remember, the auction closes at 9 p.m. sharp on Saturday, October 3rd. The Hyde's been a rather lonely place without you. Your support underwrites all that we do here at the Hyde and is greatly appreciated. So I hope to see you on a screen this week and in person soon. Be safe and be well. Thanks.